I'd be yes, I'd be do. I'd be confused too, if I were you. So why are we talking about IBS anyways? Well, because it's a common condition that affects the colon. And I'm pretty sure, if not yourself, I, you will know somebody who's got the symptoms or even this label on them. Now, what is IBS really? IBS stands for Irritable Bowel Syndrome. What it's not, it's not inflammatory bowel disease. That we'll discuss another time. IBS. What symptoms can you get with it? It's often associated with abdominal pains, bloating, sometimes diarrhea, constipation, sometimes alternating between the two. It's often more uh, significant or often more severe at the end of the day, but it's never at night. Important fact. What causes it? Well, it's basically the function of your colon has been disrupted for whatever reason. It could be the colon is contracting too long for uh, too tightly leading to diarrhea, it could be too lax leading to constipation. It could be the nerve endings of your colon firing too early leading to more pain with little gas accumulation. Or even a consequence of a diarrheal illness leading to post-infective IBS. And very commonly, it is a disruption of your bacteria balance. For example, too much sugar in your diet. Often triggers are stress and the type of food you have. So if you actually have IBS, addressing the stresses in your life, or work, it's very important. The types of food you have will play a significant role. For example, gas producing food will do a number on you. For an example of that would be cabbages produce lots of gas. Uh, that doesn't mean you don't eat vegetables. Certain foods will trigger it and certain will help. For example, an apple may not be the best one for you, but you should try it. A diet that can be very helpful in IBS is the Ford Map diet. If these simple measures don't work, then we can move towards medication. Things like rifaximin for the diarrheal type of IBS, linaclotide for the constipation type, or even amitriptyline to address hyperfiring of the nerve endings on your colon. Important to note that IBS is often a diagnosis of exclusion, meaning nothing else is there. Things that are not associated with IBS, and this is very important, is fevers, vomiting, weight loss, and symptoms at night. They are not associated with IBS, so be sure you do not have any one of this. Another thing to bear in mind, there are a lot of conditions that can look like IBS but are not. Things like lactose intolerance, celiac disease, inflammatory bowel disease, cancers, microscopic colitis. It is important to be sure you have the right diagnosis. If you have the earlier mentioned symptoms, you may well have IBS. If you have IBS and you are no better, please be sure you actually have IBS. And if you actually have IBS and are no better on the simple measures, then maybe it's about time you see your gastroenterologist.